again, it's going to actually improve this team so much because they have the depth. They're not going to have injuries, nagging injuries later in the season. Three in the backfield, including Whipple. And a handoff, and Miller again stuffed for a loss on the play. We'll see on the defense a couple guys stepping up. Number 90, Stephen Wesley. Also there, number 50, Tyrone Cornelius, a backup at the linebacker position. And we talk about the offense, KC. Let's switch to the other side of the ball here as you get a look at the defense. And for the third straight season, there will be a new starting middle linebacker mm -hmm. moving from Glenn Cook to last year's leading tackler, Daryl Sharpton. And right now, a vacancy, and we'll see whether or not the likes of Kylan Robinson, a seldom-used senior, is able to step into that role as the pass is caught by Travis Benjamin out of bounds. But you talk about the quarterback position on offense, middle linebacker on defense, one of those integral positions, and Robinson, uh, one of those who might be looked at to step in at that spot. What you find in a middle linebacker is a... It's a natural leadership position as well. So these guys have to be vocal. They're calling the plays in the huddle for the entire defense, and they have to know where everybody is on the field at all times. Number 51 there, Shayon Green, also a chance to get some playing time. He returns as a redshirt freshman. Johnson, the man in motion on your screen. Whipple rolls to his right. The left-hander looking downfield has a man wide open, and that's the tight end, the newcomer Billy Sanders, a redshirt freshman out of Phoenix, Arizona. A little bit of a misdirection there. I like, I like, I like it even more as I get to know more and more about Mark Whipple's offense. I think he's probably getting to the end of his playbook, getting the installation in for this spring. But it's it's been a two-year process to get each and every each and every uh, play from his playbook in the game. All right, let's send it down to the sideline. So many esteemed University of Miami football alumni, and to introduce us to them. Let's take it down to Allison Williams. Thanks, guys. Here with Vernon Carey, former University of Miami offensive lineman, now with the Dolphins. And Vernon, you're one of many alumni out here on the sidelines to watch the spring game. Have you gotten a chance to catch up with some old teammates? Yeah, I just got a um, chance to catch up with Dan Morgan and um, Clint Porter. There's a couple guys I played with. And um, one of my old former coaches from high school, Roland Smith. So it was, it was good. So you're talking to some of the former players, but also some of the current players as well. What what did you have to say to those guys? Um, you know, you know, I did play with a lot of passion. Um, and let's win some games. Um, we, we turned the program back to some um, prominence. The offensive line will now be without Jason Fox, A.J. Trump, some young guys trying to step up. We've got two offensive linemen that are early enrollees. How big is that transition going from playing high school football to college? Um, it's a big transition, but, you know, um, Swayze do a good job with those guys in the weight room. And um, hopefully they... That's somebody breaking for a big game here. I think it was Mike James there on the run. So the offensive line obviously doing a good job of putting up some blocks here today. But talk a little bit more about making that transition. Like I said, um, Andrew Swayze, he does a good job with those guys, getting them strong and, and getting them ready for college football. Um, you know, he's one of the main reasons a lot of these guys in the NFL now. So I know um, for a lot of people there's a game coming up this fall that they have a star next to, and that's Ohio State. What will it be like for you to watch these two teams battle for the first time since that Fiesta Bowl game? Um, it'll be a big game. You know, we got to get them. You know, they got us um, at the, high, um, in the Fiesta Bowl my junior year, so um, I'm, I'm kind of bitter about that all the time. Can you still get a little revenge even though it's been so many years? Oh, yeah. You know, um, you know they're a big power, big 10 team, and, um, you know, with the, with the youth, so we got to go out there and be able to go out there and beat them and let them know that um, they made a mistake. All right, Vernon, thanks so much for your time, guys. All right, thanks a lot, Allison, and uh, some University of Miami fans credit the program with not five but six national champion uh, championships, rather, after that uh, controversial call, to say the least, in the Fiesta Bowl National Championship 2002 against Ohio State, and uh, we'll see if Miami can offer some payback in Columbus this fall. Hand off again, Mike James. He's been the prominent back featured in this series for the offense, including one he broke for about 51 yards. James just happy to be back. Casey in his more natural position of tailback after performing as a true freshman out of position last year. The injury at fullback to Pat Hill and James, I thought, did a heck of a job as a true freshman as a starting fullback at this level. Yeah, he did a great job filling in for Pat Hill. But, you know, Pat Hill is one of those guys that they get back is going to definitely contribute to this offense. But Mike 
James in his natural position, able to break break down uh, the tacklers, run through run through tacklers, and wear down the defense, and also has that breakaway speed. Well, A.J. Highsmith has been impressive this afternoon. The one touchdown pass to Hankerson, and here a completion on the sideline to Devon Johnson, the sophomore out of Booker T. Washington High School. Johnson last year, a redshirt year for him, two years ago, had five catches, 71 yards, and a touchdown against the Blue Devils of Duke University. So the offense marching down here as we approach five minutes to play in our first quarter of this annual spring scrimmage for the University of Miami. A good look at A.J. Highsmith, son of former Hurricane star tailback Alonzo. Here's a handoff to James again, running left, has some blocking across the 10, switches hands, and knocked out of bounds inside the five-yard line. Coach Shannon's been talking about finishing plays, finishing blocks, finishing runs, and on that play, you see Mike James running downfield and also gets a nice stiff arm at the end of the play. He runs with attitude, runs with aggression, and it's tough. It makes it very tough for these defensive backs to run up and tackle this guy. He's very physical. It's going to be a great addition to this, this offense. Well, Randy Shannon back for year number four, but a natural progression we spoke about in the open. You see his overall record as head coach. It's been plus two on the win column each year for him. Highsmith again on the roll into the end zone and a touchdown. Again, number 81, Devon Johnson, and the second touchdown thrown by the sophomore, A.J. Highsmith. A.J. Highsmith taking a page out of Ja'Cory Harris's playbook. Looks calm, cool, and collective back there. Rolls out to his right, fakes out on the waggle. Wide open receiver in the end zone. That's a Miami Hurricane touchdown. He beat Brandon McGee, the sophomore cornerback. And so Whiteclaw on for his second conversion with a point after. The snap the hold and the kick is good for Whiteclaw. And again, impressive has been Devon Johnson and A.J. Highsmith in our first quarter of action here at Trans Powell Stadium. It's orange and white and the University of Miami Spring Scrimmage. 